Oh, hey, don't mind me. I'm just trying to find games to play on my laptop. You know, games like Star Wars Battlefront 2 and Conquer are fun and all, but they just can't do it anymore, so they have to go. From now on, I'm all about that big PC gaming like chocolate makes you happy. So, what better way to start off my journey to being a PC gamer than browsing the Steam store? Ooh, look, I found one here called Crisis. Now, let's see here. Minimum specs, 1 gig of RAM. Oh, well, that's easy. I have 4. 256 megabytes of RAM. Oh, look, I have 1.7. 3.2 gigahertz CPU. I have 2.13. Close enough. Oh. Crisis for PC. Also known as My Computer's on Fire. Came out November 13th, 2007 for PC and 2011 for PS3 and Xbox 360. Gee, wait long enough? It's a first person shooter which has you running through a jungle, gunning down members of the North Korean military to extract two scientists who are being held prisoner. Well, shoot. What now? Turns out it's digital only. The amount of weird looks I got at Target when I asked for Crisis Remastered on Switch. Yeah! Crisis on Switch! Uh... Yeah, Crisis on Switch. Yeah, so Crisis kept crashing. It's apparently because it's I had a colon in my name and for some reason Crisis has a huge problem with colons. So I had to change it from to just freaking crisis making me change my name now i've never played crisis on pc so i can't say how good this looks compared to pc but we can always look up a comparison online the game looks good overall running at a locked 30 fps and at a dynamic 720p to 900p switching between the two resolutions whenever possible or necessary and do you see that battle for bikini bottom rehydrated that's how you do it and you can't even tell when it swaps, it's just that good. But you'll get occasional frame drops during really intense actions. I didn't notice it a whole much, but and so it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Ew, motion blur. There's no option to turn it off. Why add motion blur? That just adds more stuff to the system to do and it could drop frames. Trust me, I know, I have a laptop with Pentium P6200. It's not complaining about the frame rate being bad, it's fine. The Switch is half handheld, the fact that it runs at all is pretty cool, so stop complaining that it doesn't run at your perfectionist 60 or 100 plus frames per second. It's funny because the people saying that are probably the people who didn't play it at all back in the day, because I've seen actual PC players who played this back in the day saying, Wow, it's crazy that Crisis runs on the Switch, or wow, I remember spending 3000 plus to run this game and it still looks good on the Switch. So stop! While we're on pet peeves, let's get this one out of the way. The sensitivity sucks. Moving side to side and up and down is fine, but moving diagonally is trash. It's so slow, and I don't want to change the sensitivity to make it faster, because that just means making everything else faster. Why the heck would they do it like that? Well, at least you have gyro controls. Oh, we'll get to that later. It boots up pretty quickly, so you don't have to wait long to get to the title screen, but the loading screen, oh, that takes forever. It takes like almost a minute or so to get to the game, and I didn't get all of it, but this should give you a fair idea of it. But once you get to the actual game, the game is pretty fun. It looks and reminds me of Far Cry 3, and I kind of play it how I do, Far Cry 3, but it's not. It's not open world, and there's some minor customization. Not to the extent of Far Cry 3's, but more so as in adding a red dot, flashlight, or silencer at whim, and so many reticule options. You also have two power-ups, a cloak which turns you invisible and lets you evade enemies, except for when it doesn't, and the armor mode. It's useless, it could have been left out. I just don't feel a difference between when I have it on or off, and it feels like I die quicker when it's on. 
scratch that it is really useful especially later on in the game i wrote that only a few hours in and boy was i wrong oh and you can also sprint really fast you can do all these things granted you have energy you also got a weapon wheel to access and can view your objectives and what's cool about this is that the gameplay doesn't stop it's just a pop-up so you can still die while looking at what to do next and while we're on that the game is a little hard too I'm playing normal and died quite a few times. The weapon I find myself using the most is the AK because almost all the enemies carry it and barely the scar, the default weapon you start off with. So I just use the scar when I'm doing south. It still blows my mind that the Switch can play Crisis as good as it does despite some glitches and dots here and there. But still, this looks pretty good considering that when this game came out in 2007, it was barely playable on anything that wasn't equivalent to a 2080 Ti, and thus started the meme. Being thrown around whenever someone would show off their big PC build. And yes, the Tegra X1 can run Crisis, but if only the Switch ran a Snapdragon. No, it actually took a while to actually be able to play Crisis on PC at 60 FPS plus at 1080p with settings set to max, mostly because of all the physics and the cry engine it would be too powerful for even almost the top PC chips back then. But anyways, with that out of the way, let's get into story. Crisis' story revolves around rescuing archaeologists who went missing around North Korea probably, and you get separated from your crew. But slowly as the first mission goes on, you realize something's not right. Then the game brings it freaking aliens. So the thing the archaeologist found was an old alien beacon and it awoke the aliens on the island. So cool. The game is really hard, especially in this section. I keep dying and in the night part I played it mostly stealth. But it's still hard because you're getting stalked by this helicopter the whole time. Sometimes they go down with one hit from a grenade launcher and sometimes they don't. And enemies have unfair vision. So I basically just rush through and screw this part. Screw this part in particular. It's so hard because the enemies use the same tactic you do as in spamming the cloak and having more health than your average enemy. I died so many times and I actually lower the difficulty. I mean this part is a little cool. It's basically a game of cat and mouse especially because I have the precision rifle and have, you really have to pay attention to your surroundings. Occasionally, you'll run into a visual glitch like this, but besides this, this is the only time I ran into a visual glitch. But I did run into a crash while playing, and it even slowed down my switch down to tremendously to where it took a while to get to the home screen, move, go to the album, basically do anything. But I think because the console was overheating, because Crisis is just that demanding, and I was in my room in the middle of the summer in Central Valley, California, and with no AC. So I just put it in a sleep mode to cool it off, and other than that, I haven't run into that problem since. Mostly because that was the only time I played in my room when I usually play in my living room, but if you play in an area where it's relatively cool, you shouldn't run into this problem. And yep, that's the only time the game ever crashed on me, so lucky me, I guess. This game even handles the tank level good, at least from what I think, because... Eventually, as you progress, you get access to a lot more guns and customization options like incendiary bullets. Later, you get a short boss fight against the main Korean boss, but I rushed him thinking it would activate some assassination-like cutscene, but nope. Anyways, I killed him. The overall boss fight was okay. The game has pretty tense sequences, especially when you enter the alien vessel. But at the same time, you get a sense of awe and wonder as you wander through the crystal and... Ugh. Yeah, this is the area you get properly introduced to the aliens, and boy are they tough to kill. They sneak up on you, are quick, and make no noise, leading to unintentional jump scares. It gets more tense as you see them wandering through the area you're exploring, and these aliens really remind me of lurkers and seekers from Skyrim. This area is just so big and disorienting, and it's really easy to get lost because there's no gravity, 
and you spin occasionally. So I finally escape and boom, nuclear wasteland. This game pulls an uncharted on us. Instead of fighting the KPA, the group you've been fighting throughout the whole game, you fight aliens now as you make your way down the mountain to the extraction zone. And oh hey, he's alive. This part of the game is really cool as you gun down all the aliens coming at you with their own minigun. It's essentially an escort mission because you have to escort your teammate to safety with you as well before he dies from the cold. This area could be hard if you don't move quick enough. If you stay in one spot, you'll be stuck there because the enemies don't stop coming so you basically have to rush through them. So basically everything after this, you strictly fight the aliens. The KPA have up and left the island and it completely breaks the usual shtick shooters do. And this part of the game is pretty fun, shooting all of them out of the sky and while they come at you with major destruction everywhere. When you get back to base, you find out that one of your teammates, Psycho, has captured one of the aliens. It's here you find out that they drain energy source from nearby power sources which was causing all the weird stuff on the island you come across. So the Admiral asks permission from the Pentagon to use a nuke, ignoring logic and reasoning that maybe, ooh, if they harvest energy, maybe throwing a nuke at them which has high amounts of radiation in it might not be such a good idea. They fire a nuke, things blow up, it gets worse. So you're under attack and the ship is getting destroyed. Good job, Admiral. I like this section, it's fun and chaotic and reminds me of the last mission from Battlefield 4. I don't mean that in a bad way, I actually like Battlefield 4, short campaign and all. Crawling through the base alone when it's destroyed with aliens cr everywhere definitely creates a tense atmosphere. Just small things like lighting, sound, and shadows create something so tense. This definitely feels really different compared to what you've been playing for most of the game. Anyways, when you get to the Admiral, he freaking dies. And the only thing you can do is escape. This part can be really cheap. You get spammed by enemies and then the Exo Alien comes in. And when I did this, it took forever to try to take it down. I don't even think it helped that I swapped my minigun out because I ran out of ammo for it. But then later on, find the ammo for it and not know where the minigun is. And then die. It's so frustrating because I went through so much ammo and spread for so long and I just died through to spam. Oh, when I respawned, I had my minigun back, went to where the ammo was and unloaded on it and it died in like 10 seconds. The warship boss battle is just as frustrating. You get spammed with enemies, die. This one's okay. You have to destroy its four cannons before you're able to damage it at all. And the thing is is that the launcher you use is not accurate at all. You can aim right at it and not be able to luck on it. But no, you have to aim slightly below it and uh, I did this so many times and died because I couldn't luck onto it at all. Anyways, when I eventually took it down, I escaped and the warship takes down the whole ship with it, leaving us three the only survivors. I'm picking up a transmission. What is it? You ain't gonna believe this, mate. It's Profit. He's alive? And kick him by the sound of it. Looks like he's inside the sphere. Lock under his position. We're going back. So that's Crisis. Was it fun? Yeah. Was it enjoyable? Sure. Will I play it again probably in the near future? Probably. The game is definitely fun and the, the characters, they're just okay. They're nothing to write home about. They're not Nathan Drake, Elena, or Sully, but they get the job done. I think if I ever replayed this game, it would probably be only the four chapters, first four chapters, and then probably quit. There are only 10 chapters in total in the Switch version, and I, it took me around like 10 hours and 40 minutes or so to beat the game. Not counting how many times I probably had it paused for an extended period of time whenever I had to do something, but I don't think I ever had it paused for that long, so it would probably take you around that around that long maybe to beat it. Depending on your difficulty, it probably take you longer. So it'll probably take you around that long to beat it, and, and let's just skip all the cutscenes. Crashes is really fun, but if you only have a Switch like me, and are just dying to play Crisis Remastered on Switch, well then yeah, go get it. It gets the job done, it's pretty fun. You can even take it on the go, but 
even though the joy cons are not the best to control during shooters because you know something with dead zones and you really have to push to move the camera and it's even more harder when you have drift which i don't eh. and the gyroscope is pretty trash it's just no good to use it's just so slow and might as well just be and you may as well just be standing still whenever you use it even when you aim down your sights it's no good you really have to flick it to get it to move decently and there was an add-on called crisis warhead which is the events of this game but in the perspective of psycho one of your teammates in the game and knowing that you can, can pretty tell when Stuff is meant for Crisis Warhead because Psycho is barely with you and when he does he just goes off on his own to take care of something or whatever else it is. It's pretty cool because it gives you a sense of that the events going on in the game are just so big and massive and doesn't just revolve around you. But it's also stepping itself in its foot because it kind of robs you of some character development in there that could have been between Psycho and Prophet due to their knowledge. Because due to... Because to them, they're the only survivors of their squad, and a level's missing from the game. So should you get it on the Switch? Well, that depends. If you only have a Switch, sure, go ahead. But if you have, but if you're one of those purists who's just looking to play on Crisis at home with the best graphics and physics, with shaders and ray tracing, well, then go for PC. And if you don't have a PC, and just the PS4 or Xbox One, then I suppose what those two would, those will do fine too. Oh wait, seeing games like this run on the Switch is awesome and makes me hope to see even more open world games run on the Switch like Far Cry. It can even be port of Far Cry 3, or a game like Just Cause, either Just Cause 2, 3, or 4, it doesn't matter which one, just more of this. But all of this has got me wondering. What would it look like if you just ported it over? Like, it was just a straight port, no remaster, no redoing anything. 